Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today we will take a look at some new Mauritius Comprise content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now let's dive right into the stories. First one is titled "Don't Lie to the Residents." Was reminded of this little occurrence from a few years back today. Thought I'd share it. Don't know if it's malicious in the traditional sense, but I did follow instructions to the letter and embarrass the one giving instructions. So I don't know. Tell me what you think. So, about three years ago, I worked for a care home. I still do work for a care home, but I also did three years ago. It's primarily nursing care with a little dementia care. The residents can range from being totally independent and capable of going about their day with minimal assistance from staff, to end-of-life care with checks every half hour to make sure there's always someone with them. The particular resident I'm going to be talking about here, we'll call Dot, because she looked like the East Enders character of the same name, only with a thick Liverpudlian accent. Dot had a great sense of pride and a low tolerance for anyone who she believed was talking down to her. She was largely independent, just had a few funny turns here and there. I was working a night shift when this happened, 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., and it was round about midnight. My colleague was setting up breakfast trays for the morning, I believe, whilst the nurse was doing a few clerical duties. We had a nurse from an agency due to ours being ill. Agency workers can be a mixed bag here. Some are lovely, hardworking and understanding. Some are grumpy and uptight. Some, we politely ask if they don't get sent again. The nurse that night fell squarely into the middle category. She would be snippy with the care staff, opting to do her work without any communication to us unless it was absolutely necessary to hand anything over to us, fair enough. Nobody says you have to make friends here, and would treat the residents with a false smile and a semi-condescending tone sort of like you'd expect one to use when talking to small children. Dot was going through one of her funny turns. She had put her coat on and was trying to barge her way out of the front door. I came across the reception area to find the nurse trying to talk to Dot, with Dot trying to get to the front door saying, get out of the way, you miserable old trout, to the nurse. The nurse was saying things like, I'm sorry, Mrs. Dot, but we need to look after you here. It would be irresponsible of us to allow you to wander about outside at this time. You could seriously hurt yourself. Look, it's dark out. All things that seem to make Dot angrier and angrier. After a while, Dot stormed off. I asked the nurse why Dot wanted to get out the home. Because she has dementia. Yes, but why in her own mind, is she trying to leave? In her mind, it makes perfect sense for her to leave the home, what's her reasoning? Oh, she wants to go to the pharmacy. What difference does that make? We can't allow the residents out unsupervised for any reason, and especially not in the dead of night. I'll talk to her. No, you will not. I know how people like you work. You'll say anything to keep the residents happy, even if it means filling their heads with lies. Well, I was taught that we have to be honest with the residents. And this is true, you can't tell a resident an outright lie at least not where I work. If a resident with dementia is distraught because their mother hasn't given them a phone call, you cannot say to them something like, oh, but she did ring you about a couple of hours ago, remember? However, it's kind of frowned upon to say something like, your mother died 20 years ago. Dead people can't use the telephone, instead, honest as it may be. You have to learn to use tact, omit details if they could cause distress, and treat the residents with some modicum of dignity. Anyway, somehow I convinced the nurse to let me speak to Dot. The nurse said that if she sees me lie to Dot, she will file a report, and see that the home manager knows I am institutionalizing the residents, which is a very, very serious accusation here. We made our way to Dot's room. She is angrily stuffing things into her handbag at the time. The nurse folded her arms and stood in the doorway as I spoke to Dot. Dot? What do you want, my name? What are you getting all dressed up for? Is something special happening? I need to get to the pharmacy. They have my medicine. But, 
do it Sunday. The pharmacy isn't open on Sunday. Dot stopped in her tracks. For the first time, she looked confused, rather than angry. Is it? Yes, Dot. Look. Here's your clock. It says today's date on it, and it says Sunday, see? Dot made a sheepish face to this. Oh. Oops. I suppose I'd better get settled. I do actually feel rather sleepy. I left Dot to it. When I walk out the door, the nurse is stunned that I handled it so easily. She tried to sputter out that it was still filling the resident's head with lies for the sake of a quiet life. I just asked her, what day is it right now? And she didn't have an answer. The nurse tried to speak to my colleague about my behavior later that night. My colleague basically told her that what I did was the same thing she would have done. When Dot had her funny turns, she would argue with you about the time of day, how safe it was outside, etc. But as you got to know the residents, you got to know what kind of advice they'd be willing to listen to. Anyway, there's the time an angry resident calmed down and a grouchy nurse got egg on her face. Hope you enjoyed. Next one is titled, Move that truck right now or I'm calling the police. Just a quickie from many years ago. Delivering furniture in Chicago we pulled up at a loading zone to find a Mercedes-Benz parked there. We parked in the street alongside the Mercedes, it would be a few more steps getting the sofa around the car, but no big deal, it should be a quick in and out delivery and we'd be on our way. We came out a few minutes later to find an irate woman screaming at us for blocking her in with our truck. She demanded we move the truck and threatened to call the police, and that's when my boss told her, call them right now, because I'm not moving the truck until they get here. That's probably when she remembered the sign above her car that said that said loading zone no parking. She suddenly turned into a completely different person. She apologized for losing her temper. She apologized for taking up the loading zone and making us work around her. She actually sounded sincere and that was good enough for my boss. We exchanged pleasant farewells and then left for our next stop without making her call in a parking ticket on herself. Next one is titled, I'm sorry, but employees can't eat. I used to work at a restaurant, it was actually two separate joints that shared a kitchen, that was often very slow during the week. I was pretty friendly with most of the bartenders, cooks, other servers, etc., except the manager and the assistant manager. The manager had been there for about a thousand years and was a cantankerous old guy that hated everyone and mumbled to himself a lot. He would often brag that he drove home half asleep at 4 am and would jolt himself awake using the rumble strips when his car crossed into the shoulder. The assistant manager, like many assistant managers, was mean and bitter because he didn't have enough power to call the shots as the manager, but had enough power to order the rank and file around and generally make life miserable. Our story begins one Tuesday evening. It was a slow night in my half, but the other place had live music and a decent crowd, so I had been hustling and helping out the folks on the other side while waiting maybe two or three tables all night on my end. It's about 9.30 and the kitchen closes at 10 so things are winding down. I'm in the kitchen talking with the cooks and the assistant manager and I'm standing by the expo table, where there's a plastic bin filled with ice and then small buckets for toppings, things like tomatoes, lettuce, onions, etc. Since I've been there since about 3.30 and haven't had anything to eat, I take a pickle spear from the bucket and bring it to my mouth to eat it. Let me stress at this point that this happened all the time and literally everyone did it, including the assistant manager. But the pickle never reaches my mouth, he slaps my hand and I drop it. I'm kind of confused, the cooks are confused too. I turn to him and ask, what was that? He says, in a smarmy voice, employees can't eat. Rather than remind him that he himself had eaten a few Oreos in just the same manner a few hours before. I stay silent because I know revenge is a dish best served cold. Fast forward several weeks. It's a Friday night and the place is very busy. Many of the regulars are at the bar chatting and having a good time. There's kind of an anteroom where the staff can hang out after work if we don't need the space. I clock out and see that two of my co-workers are having a beer there so I go over to join them. One of the regulars sees us and brings us a bowl of some homemade trail mix he made. It was a nice time, sitting with some friends after work,
drinking beer, and eating some trail mix. Enter the manager, the assistant manager, and another waiter. He has to void something on a check and he needs a manager ID to okay it. Normal stuff. They finish and as they're going for the door, I see the assistant manager side eye the trail mix. I know what must be done. He stops and walks over to the table and grabs a handful of the trail mix. Immediately I bring my left hand up and forcefully slap his hand into the bowl. Nuts and raisins go flying everywhere. The two people I was with stop talking. Everyone looks at me and silence falls. In a clear, angry voice the assistant manager turns to me and asks, why did you do that? Without hesitation, I look him right in the eye and say, employees can't eat. After about five seconds of silence, he turns and walks away and we resume socializing. The guy was hated almost universally at the place. I had a lot of fun retelling the story for the next few weeks. Next one is titled, the jury duty guy said people fake ICU noises over the phone and wanted proof. The jury duty letter came while I was in Royal North Shore ICU in 2013 for a brain hemorrhage from an aneurysm. I was four days post-surgery when the letter came and bored I read it in the hospital. Told them I couldn't. They said no excuse do you have evidence. The nurse had me hold up my license, wrote a sign that said, are you kidding mate, and took a pic of me 80 scalp staples, black eye, IVs and the spinal fluid drain in my head at my request. Never heard a peep after that. Next one is titled, Boss says I don't know anything yet so I do the absolute bare minimum. Some background. I started my first, full-time, office job at a corporate America hellhole a week after college. It was an industry I hadn't worked in before and I needed to be licensed. The company that hired me, we'll call them Smith Inc., paid for my licensing fees, study materials, classes, etc. for me to become licensed. The total cost was about $500. It was a sweet deal. They gave me approximately 90 days, paid, to study a textbook and pass an online course. I didn't have to do any work for the company, simply study and pass the licensing exam. It was pretty easy and I passed on my first try. My boss, let's call her Mary, was super excited that I passed and I began training under an associate level co-worker who had just been promoted from the position I was in. The co-worker, Jen, was super great and helpful. She began training me on two simple tasks that I could do. The only rule was if the client had a question specifically about their contract, I would ask Jen or forward it to my team lead. Well. I ended up getting an email from a client about their contract and I video called Jen to ask how to handle. She walked me through it as I shared my screen with her. I wrote the email back to the client exactly how she told me and she read the email before sending. A month goes by and everything is great. I'm learning and getting more comfortable. Then I get a really nasty email from Mary. She cc's my whole team into the email going on and on about how I cannot answer contract questions and how she's gone over this with me before, she hadn't, Jen was the one who told me I can't answer contract questions. Both Jen and I try to explain what happened and that Jen was the one who wrote the email, I just typed what Jen said and sent it from my email since the client emailed me and not Jen. Mary then calls the team up in a video call and goes on about how I don't know anything and I just started and I really don't know how this industry works and that answering contract questions is out of my job description. It went on for about 5 minutes. I say, okay, and get off the call crying. The next day out of pure pettiness I simply do the absolute bare minimum. I don't know anything, right, Mary? I still complete all my tasks and everything that's required of me. Anything more advanced that I would normally try to learn with Jen's help? Nope. I just forwarded it to our team lead and said, sorry, Mary said I can't do anything outside of my job description. Work was much less stressful after I decided to listen to Mary, and what many others told me before, don't do anything outside of your job description. Also, Mary later fired me for being a whistleblower when I reported the company to the health authority for violating COVID protocols. I sleep better at night knowing how much money Mary wasted on training me. Last one is titled, Won't pay 1.5 times on Bank Holiday Monday? Enjoy paying double. 
This is my very tiny victory. I am currently working for a DIY store, it's an okay job, but the management sure are questionable. So for those not in the UK, Bank Holiday Monday, is a national holiday that most places, including schools, close. It's common for places open on bank holiday to pay their workers anywhere from 1.25 to 2 times their salary or close early as a way to make it less shit. We don't close early. I questioned my manager a while ago, do you pay more then? And manager goes, no no you just get an extra day holiday instead. Which is complete BS because whilst you are entitled to take 4 to 6 weeks of holiday a year you'll be damned if the mangers here approve it all. So the extra day is nothing. Your holiday also resets at the end of the year meaning if you don't take 2 weeks in 2020 you will not get an extra 2 weeks in 2021 and you also don't get paid the holiday you don't take when it resets. Therefore an ultimate win for management. Go ducking figure. My manager basically told us all to, stop whining, and do, what you're paid to do, because you still, get something. The malicious compliance kicked in when I signed myself up for every bank holiday Monday without a single, whine, because, I leave in August which is before the holiday reset which means my manager has to pay up all the holiday I didn't take due to legal laws in England that mean it's legally required you pay any holiday not taken after someone has resigned. So that half I, and everyone else I'll add, wanted has turned into a double. He never shuts up about overspending employee, labor budget and how we all need to take holiday before we leave. He hasn't noticed yet I've never taken a day of holiday. Thanks for listening.